I normally say like, okay, then you go jump over the <laughs> an entire Kia Optima. If somebody can do that and dunk in front of 20,000 people, cool. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Real. We sit down with some of the world's best athletes and react to their highlights. Today, we have a very special guest. We have six-time All-Star and probably the funniest man in the NBA, Blake Griffin. Blake, welcome to the show. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. I appreciate that intro. That's nice of you. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about everything from your NBA career to outside the NBA with the, the comedy and everything. So it should be a blast, man. Let's do it. Let's get into it. So the first highlight we have is one that's like, every NBA fan in the world has seen maybe three, four times. So talk yeah. to me, what is this camp that has so many young up and coming players and having you dunking from them, in front of them? So this was a uh, Team USA workouts before 2012 uh, Olympics. And so they brought, I think this was like LeBron's camp or I, you know, I can't remember like what camp this was that came over. So they all came over to like watch the end of our workouts. And then, you know, we were all shooting. Everybody's like, yo, Blake, yo, don't do, do something windmill. Uh. So I just did, I did one. I didn't even know who half these kids were at the time. I knew who some of them were, but man, <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> looking back. I'm guessing when you were like uh, towards the beginning of your, your career, you probably got that pretty often. Like, hey, Blake, let's dunk something for me. Dunk something for me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, or, or it's like, I'll be on the street and people, people will be like, Hey man, I'll dunk on you. I'm just like, no, no, you won't. But uh, okay, all right, cool. So going through with that video, uh, we have players like Zach Levine, D'Angelo Russell, Cliff Alexander, just a bunch of future NBA players. Anybody out of that crowd, maybe, like you said, you may have knew a few of them, but any of them been super impressive to you in their careers? Yeah, yeah I mean, tons of them. Uh, obviously, D'Angelo Russell, Book, Zach Levine. I, I was kind of shocked because I didn't realize some of them were, were there. Um, I knew, I think I remember, I knew like the D'Angelo Russell because he was like the main one up there and he did like the, oh, he didn't even stretch, no, that, like that whole thing. So I knew him, I, I could see Book back there. Like when they slowed the video down and started like showing all the other guys back there, I was I was shocked at how many how many uh, NBA players, how many like good NBA players were, were in that video. Let's get to your rookie season officially. Uh, we're going to start All-Star Weekend because you had one of the greatest rookie campaigns ever, you know, you rookie of the year all-star game dunk contest everything but we're starting with the dunk contest and the car what what is the process of getting this as your dunk when i first said i was going to do the dunk contest i wanted to do uh i wanted to have a convertible right and have them, like four of my teammates drive out in the convertible bd throw it up jump over the whole thing uh the nba said i couldn't do that <laughs> because uh you know kia is a big sponsor of the nba so we're like, all right, well, let's see what we can do. And, you know, they were like, the only car we, we'd really let you use is the Optima. It's like a, I mean, it's a sedan. Like, I, I don't, I didn't think I could clear the whole thing. So I'm like, right. all right, well, maybe I can still do like the hood or something, have BD come up the sunroof. Um, so we had to do like a little rehearsal. And I remember like everybody from the our team, like our GM, everybody showed up to this dunk rehearsal just to make sure I could do it, to make sure I wasn't gonna clip my foot and go, you know, right. face plant in the hood. But it worked out, you know what I mean? It, it, it was, uh, it was, it was all right. It was uh, one of those, one of those things. It, it was cool. What do you say to the people that say like, since you didn't clear the top of the car, then you didn't really dunk over? I normally say like, okay, then you go jump over the <laughs> an entire Kia Optima. If somebody can do that and dunk. In front of 20,000 people, cool. Let's get to some regular season games. Um, one of the best dunks of your career also happened in that rookie season against Timothy Mozgov. Tell me what you remember from that play. Uh, Not a lot, man. Just, it, it went kind of fast. I remember coming over, setting the screen, rolling, and then kind of like being like, I'm not going to get there, so let me just throw it. And then, of course, DeAndre, like, was it seemed, it seemed like DeAndre was there for every single one of my dunks to always, like, punch me or hit me or push me. Um, and that always, you know, hyped me up even more. But yeah, this this game in particular, man, like, I remember after this game, like, sort of just like, it, it just never slowed back down. It was like one of those games for me that just like, sort of like launched me into to the NBA, I guess. So how did you feel to finally get out on the court after like having to sit out your entire official, like first season? Was there pressure on you personally or just that whole season of sitting out that it, uh, really click. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of pressure. I mean, I, you know, I got to this point, right, like where I'd always wanted to be in the NBA for so long. And, and then my first year, I had to sit out, didn't get to play any games, uh, didn't even really get to travel with the team. 
Um, so I was so ready to start playing. You know, it was it was a it was a crazy year for me, but it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I feel like I learned I learned a lot, you know, throughout the course of that year. We hear a lot of stories of like prospects basically telling teams, "Don't draft me because I don't want to be there." Type thing. And of course, yeah. you were drafted to the Clippers, and at that time, the Clippers are like the laughing stock of the league. So did it ever yeah. cross your mind to potentially like? I know number one pick is like where everybody wants to be, but maybe I want to go number two or number three. <laughs> Um, no, to be I mean, I heard that a lot. I remember there was a bunch of articles written. People were telling me, don't go there. You know, every every number one pick goes there and, and doesn't pan out. But that just wasn't my, like, mindset. My mindset was like, you know, this is this is a, a, a franchise that they're, they're willing to draft me. And, and um, you know, I, I like that challenge. I want that challenge of, of being a part of the team that, that tried to, you know, change the, I guess, the perspective or the, the, the um, the way people looked at that franchise. The 2009 draft class is like, I think one of the most slept on classes. People always talk about 2003, 1996, but 2009 had you, Harden, Steph Curry. How do you guys rank up against some of the legendary draft classes? I mean, I think we're, I mean, there, there's been some great ones. Like you said, 03 was unbelievable. There's There's been some other ones since then, but um, you know, what's crazy when we were coming out, I mean, I remember like sort of having this conversation. We were all in, um, I think we were actually in Detroit at, at like the uh, the final four, and then like Steph was there, James was there, a couple other guys, and everybody was getting their awards, um, you know, for end the year college college awards, and and we like had that conversation about how like everybody was saying this draft class was so weak, like that that was the narrative when we were coming out, and it's kind of funny now that a lot of people are saying the opposite. Um, so you know, for us, I think it's 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 I think we're all proud of the fact that that we came out of that class and. Um, I, you know, it's a, it's an honor to be a, be drafted along with those guys, Steph, James, all those guys. Uh, so, you know, I'm 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 obviously biased, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm repping the 09 class for sure. There was a clip that went around on Twitter very recently. I think you were doing something with GQ and somebody mentioned the name Kendrick Perkins. You gave a reaction. So let's talk about this dunk. What do you remember about this game in this moment? I remember sort of like not knowing how to react. The thing about these dunks, man, I, the, the thing I do remember is afterwards, like you kind of heard like the butt, like the, the initial like, oh, and then like you kept hearing like the buzz mm -hmm. from the arena. And that's kind of like when I like, you like realize like oh this might be a special one just because like in the moment it all happened so fast that was kind of what i remember i remember going up to the free throw line and then turning around and being like i can't shoot my free throw right now um and, and like walking away and taking another second so um that was a cool one just because Kirk was just so he's just like such a mean player you know what i mean he would foul you hard you know he always had that scowl on his face so uh it was it was uh it was nice to get that one on him great player kendrick perkins right <laughs> yeah yeah I don't know if you remember uh, after that, LeBron got on, went onto Twitter and made a tweet about this dunk, basically saying that it was the number one dunk and hit whatever his dunks has been throughout the season has to go alongside Blake Griffin at number one. Yeah, I kind of remember that. I, I, I also remember after that, uh, I'm pretty sure Perkins deleted his Twitter for a, for a second. <laughs> um, he obviously has it back now, but um, yeah, I, I, I remember sort of the, the buzz from all that a little bit. Talk to me about DeAndre Jordan's reaction to it, because he kind of just held you down for a second. Yeah, I don't know. Like, we never, you know, we never, like, had anything planned out, you know, or anything like that. But this one, he just came and I remember him rapping, and he's so strong. Like, I, I was like, all right, like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be, like, a little bit, like, professional about this. <laughs> he's so strong. I, I, like, had to, like, break out but I always appreciated him being there because it, it kind of it hyped me up even more um after something like that he was like that you know he was always he was always hyping me up on the on the on the court on the sideline wherever he was when I dug I mean you have a long list of, of pretty good NBA players that were on the, the the other half of a poster and one of them was Pal Gasol and not even just once you got them twice in the same game this is the game where Laker fans really started to hate up hate me <laughs> Um, and hate us for sure. After this, like everybody was just like, oh, like he can't dunk without, without, you know, offensive fouling people. Like that was over the back. Like y'all, like this one was an offensive foul. Like it may have been, this one may have been, but <laughs> it is what it is. It, it is, it is what it is. Let's go to um, the CP3 trade, right? There's a clip yeah. of you and DeAndre Jordan kind of finding out about the CP3 trade. 
and yeah. you say something along the lines of Lob City. Yeah. Was that yeah. something that originated with you or did you hear that somewhere else and decided to say it or the Lob City name, is that really just coming from Blake Griffin? Uh, I, I don't think I got that from anybody else. It's also kind of weird because there was guys who were going to get traded on right. the bus right. too. So like, you know what I mean? It's like, it, like my Chris Kamen, Eric Gordon, uh, Al Farouk, you know what I mean? Like, the, you know, it's, you're sad to see those guys leave. I was more so just like messing around with, with DJ and just like, you know, being, you know, trying, <laughs> trying to be funny. And I remember when it took off, it was just kind of like, oh man, I probably should have like trademarked that or something. <laughs> but, so talk to me about that excitement, having Chris Paul coming to the team. Man, it was great just because like, you know, we had like a lot of uh, excitement and, and some, a little bit of hype um, the year before, but you know, didn't make the playoffs. Um, and, 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 you know, getting CP sort of, sort of, it not sort of, it launched us into, you know, becoming a true like contender, you know what I mean? And, and then once we get CP, then it was like, oh, Chauncey Billups is coming here. And then, you know, it was, it was so much easier to, to go sign other guys because, you know, you sort of, you sort of put yourself in that, in that talk. So, um, you know, that moment right there was, was huge for, for me and DeAndre, especially, um, in our careers and just not only having a, a great player to play with, but somebody to also learn from too. How hard is it to play with Chris Paul? Because that's one of the things that's always attached with him, right? Like he, he's a great player, obviously, but maybe not. I won't, I won't say bad teammate, but he is hard on his teammates because he does expect like the greats from him. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say hard. I think he does. I think he does uh, demand, you know, uh, people to, to 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 be great or at least to maximize their potential. Um, I don't think hard is the right word. I think he he uh, he pushes you to, to, to be better. And, you know, just in general, as teammates, you know, you, you're not always going to agree on things. And, um, you know, that th that happens sometimes. But at the end of the day, no, I, I, I have way more appreciation for who he was as a player and, and also the things that I learned from him. You know, obviously, like I said, we didn't get it done um, as far as the championship, but um, you know, I wouldn't be where I am now without that experience. Where would you rank CP amongst point guards in the history of basketball? Ooh, um, it's gonna get me in trouble just because ranking is not my thing. I leave that to everybody else. But I mean, right. look at the the body of work that he that he has. I think a championship like solidifies him um, in, in those uh, in, in that in that section. But he, he's one of the best point guards of all time. So let's get on to the Lob City days in action. Uh, we just got a little compilation, but I want to ask you, is there a favorite moment, whether it be on the court or off the court, during these days with you, DJ, and CP, and all the surrounding guys that, that you like to talk about? Man, we had a run where we won, I think, 17 or 18 straight games. It was like over the month of December. For me at the time, especially, like that was just like such a, such a like experience, just because like I'd never really been a part of like something like that, like 18 straight games in the NBA. Is, it, it was crazy, man. We, like we would go into games and like, I remember being at Utah and we were down like 18 or something. And it was just kind of like, nobody pan, like everybody was just kind of like, all right, well, you know, we'll walk them down. And we walked them down and came back and won the game. And like, that was like maybe like the eighth or something win in a row. And then from there, we just like kept going. That was like a, a moment that I always like kind of look back on as like a, you know, that's when you really like see what winning basketball is like. So recently, uh, a couple years ago, you were traded to the Detroit Pistons. Where were you when you saw the news or heard the news? I was on a trampoline with my kids. Uh, when I found out, I saw the Woj tweet. And, uh, oh, you found out from like the put, tweet. Yeah, I kind of just put my phone back in my pocket and finished, finished, uh, you know, playing, <laughs> playing our game and then dealt with all that later. Uh, so you end up in Detroit and you just have one of the best seasons of your career. You make all NBA third team. Um, you have your career high game. Was it yeah. like a rejuvenation to be in just like you spent how many years in LA, but now to be somewhere else? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, the Pistons and, and Detroit have been an unbelievable uh, franchise and city, you know, to be in. They, they, they've um, really em embraced me, and, and um, you know, they take care of their guys, and they do they do a lot of stuff first class. And, and not to say that I didn't have that before, but you know, it's always it's always nice to come into a new situation and, and, you know, feel comfortable right away. And that's what they did. And uh, I'm, I'm very grateful for, for um, that opportunity and, you know, looking forward to, to getting back out there again, obviously. We got another clip with between you and Dennis Schroeder. I don't know if you remember this one, but you like dink it off of the back of his head. Yeah. Is that, yeah. So was, is that just like frustration of the game where you just messing with him? I don't know if you can see it, but there's the ref is like right here with his hands up. 
Right, stop. Oh, you can see it right there. <laughs> I saw it was going this way, and I, I was going to try to get it, like, you know, a little bit close. Um, I actually, I didn't really mean to hit him in the head, but I was going to try to, you know, right by his head. It didn't really work out, but, you know, I earned that one. Let's get to your first game back with the Clippers or against the Clippers in L.A. Um, how did it feel to be in the Staples Center for the first time not being in the Clippers jersey? It was different. I, I'd literally never been in the, um, in the visitor locker room before. Uh, so, you know, and you, 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 I, you know, you know, the, the tribute video, whatever, you, whatever you call it is going to happen. But, uh, it was a lot, it was emotional, man. A lot of emotions just because I had spent so much time there, man. I, you know, so many people there that I still have relationships with, you know, just in the organization. Um, so many fans that I literally sort of, you know, I, I, I grew up, you know, from the time I was, um, 20 till, you know, when I got traded, it was, uh, it, it was definitely an emotional time, but it was, it was, it was good to go in and get the win and, and you know, and get out of there. Not only just a win, you gave, I think 44, right? Like it was a really yeah. big game for you. Get to some off season training. Uh, you kind of lived throughout this transition of the NBA big man, right? When you came into the league, you weren't a guy that was stretching the floor and shooting many threes at all. And now you attempt them very regularly and you shoot a high percentage. So what was it like transitioning your games or your practices to this? You know, a work in progress. I've been doing it for a long time. I've been working on this for, for a while. Um, you know, it wasn't just, just the last couple of years. You know, early on, it was just one of those things was I had to work on my shot, you know, and that was that was important to me. It was becoming a, over, a better overall player and, and um, you know, adding another another tool to my belt. So um, that was really, you know, what it was all about. Throughout our research for a show like this, we also go through Twitter, right? And one of your tweets says, there should be a TV show where you go through people's Google search history unannounced and call it, you're weirder than I thought. Right? Yeah. So let's go through it. Blake, are you willing to go through your last five Google searches? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so <laughs> my last one was spaghetti pomodoro. And, uh, <laughs> I was ordering food last night and it was like the on the menu it said spaghetti, it like said something that was in spaghetti pomodoro. And I was like, that's not, there's, there, that's not like normally in spaghetti pomodoro. And then after that, it was the rest of it was a wrestler behind the wrestler meme. You know that picture of like the rest, <laughs> like the one where he's standing there. And the I one know exactly behind. what you're talking about. Because I, I wanted to make like a meme for my friend for my for, my, for a group chat. Yeah, the rest of them are really they're just like random, like uh, like a song, Future Solitaries. Like that game show really should just be like people having to explain why they did, like I just did. Because mm. like a lot of times it can be explained, but like out of context, you, you got to, there's some weird Google searches. You guys had a game in in Mexico this season, or maybe it was the it was last season. Either way. Um, you oh, had man. to, you had to follow up Luca's amazing Spanish. Es un placer para nosotros estar aquí. Eh, muchas gracias por el recibimiento y espero que disfruten eh, del juego. Y una cosa más, viva México, güey. Hola, México. Has your Spanish improved since this day? Uh... No, it hasn't. I did have like a little, I, I was going to say part of it in Spanish, but after he did his thing, I was just like, man, no, I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to go all English and uh, we're going to go from there. Cause you can't really top that guy played in Spain forever. So right. you know, I was like, well, let's just, let's just, let's just get this over with. One of the last ones we have is a play where you were showing the ref like an iPad trying to explain. Mm -hmm something and this was like right before the nba allowed coaches to throw like a challenge flag so you, you want to take credit for the, for the challenge flag maybe yeah maybe i mean we yeah <laughs> we still can't i remember i got a i got like a, a call or a text from like the nba head of security or whatever they're like hey uh just a reminder like you can't pull out a tablet and show it <laughs> <laughs> on the thing and then last time i saw him or at the time the next time i saw him i i i, I was like man i'm sorry i didn't mean that i didn't i literally did not even know the camera was right there i was so into like showing him this play that I, you know i had to apologize to him I was like man sorry hope, hope i didn't get you in trouble he's like no nah, it's all good man. that's all we got go. Uh, if you enjoyed this, be sure to leave it a like. This has been The Real. We want to thank Blake Griffin for being here on this episode. And we'll be back with another one soon. Peace.